Thanks for stopping by to check out this episode of Vintage Audio Review, where I'm going to talk about this Project Audio Systems Phonobox S2 Phonograph Preamplifier, useful for moving magnet or moving coil cartridges. It has several features, and we'll get into those in just a little bit, but I kind of wanted to talk about why I'm testing this. And predominantly, as you've seen, I do uh, a lot of vintage gear, mainly vintage gear, and occasionally I'll do something more modern, and this would be a more modern one. And the reason is because one of my buddies picked it up as part of uh, an estate sale, and he mentioned it to me, and I said, sure, bring it over. I'll, I'll be more than happy to test it. Now, this you can get on Crutchfield, and this is August 2024 20, when I'm recording this for like $200. So it's still available, and I've seen several reviews as to its features, but nobody really talks about how it measures. And so that's kind of what I'm going to do is tell you how it measures and you can make up your own mind based on what I tell you, whether uh, this may be for you. But before I get into that, I just wanted to talk a little bit about phono stages in general uh, with vintage gear on a receiver or integrated amplifier, they are often not measuring very well. It's uh, the exception rather than the rule where the phonograph stage, and they're usually moving magnet, uh, just doesn't measure anywhere near what its specifications were. Now they may sound okay when you listen to them, but they just don't measure well and they do fail their specs by quite a bit. So I'm always interested in looking at phonograph preamplifiers and I've done some reviews on uh, a couple of them. So this will be another review on it. Now some of the more modern uh, receivers or integrated amps that I measure like the Macintosh C48 have a stellar phonograph stage uh, and the video isn't out yet I don't think on the, the Kenwood KR9600 uh, receiver which has uh, two different phono stages and uh, those stages are really pretty good. I guess the point is that I do like looking at phono preamplifiers when they come across my workbench. So that's kind of, you know, what's going on with this. Now, this guy has a lot of features. I'll do a, a little close-up of the front and the back and uh, the bottom, and then we can go into the data. There's not a lot of data. This will be one of my quicker videos, and then I'll tell you uh, kind of what the uh, measurements mean to me. This is obviously the front of the Phonobox S2. The only thing going on here is our power on off switch and of course an LED that comes on when it's powered on. The rear of the Phonobox S2, you've got gold plated inputs and outputs. That's nice. You have a subsonic filter. Uh, your power would go in here. It's 18 volts. And then we do have a ground lug for your phonograph. This is the bottom of the Phonobox S2 and you have a couple different gains that you could select for uh, whether it was a moving magnet which would be these or a moving coil which would be these and those settings are indicated for these dip switches the first three positions your second three positions are for your resistance that you would like and then your uh, capacitance that you would like are the positions seven and eight on those dip switches Right now we're looking at the THD SNR plot at one kilohertz with a five millivolt signal applied to the Phonobox S2. I have its gain dip switch set for 40 dB of gain and the resistance is set for 1K ohm and the input capacitance is set for 100 puff. Now the 1K ohm and 100 puff will be kept throughout the testing and I will change the gain setting and we'll look at the higher gain setting. But right now we're pretty darn close to 40 dB at 39 dB. They do give a specification that the SNR should be 85 dB and we're 71 dB. Our THD is looking really, really good. It's better than 0.003%. Now it does give a specification for the THD plus noise. With that gain setting it should be better than 0.01%, so we're off a little bit on that, but it's still looking really pretty good overall. I should point out that I have the RIAA weighting applied for this measurement, 
which lowers the SNR and I thought I would switch it in just to see if I could get the SNR anywhere near the 85 dB but it, it helped lower it a bit but not enough to get it to 85 dB. Here is the Phonobox S2's frequency response from 20 Hz to 20 kHz with a 5 millivolt signal applied. Now the input gain is set for 40 dB and the input capacitance for 100 puff and the resistance for 1 k ohm, which will be what it is for all the testing unless I say otherwise. Now the specification for the flatness is plus or minus 4 tenths of a dB and we're basically at a flatness of plus or minus a tenth of a dB so this thing has an outstanding frequency response and that is with the RIAA weighting applied. Right now I've got the dip switches set so that the Phonobox S2's gain is set at its maximum of 63 dB and we're looking at the THD SNR plot at 1 kilohertz of course and I do have the RIAA weighting applied in order to improve the signal to noise ratio to what the specification says which is 85 dB well it's not quite there let's see how it does with its THD plus noise specification so for the high gain moving coil state it should be better than 0.05 percent and indeed it is it's looking really good and the normal THD is also looking good so overall the THD SNR plot in the high gain state with a 5 millivolt signal applied it's looking really good so it's not overloaded right now I've got the Phonobox S2's input gain dip switch is set to give me the most amount of gain that it can do which is 63 dB and we're pretty close to that at 62 and a quarter dB now I do have the RIAA weighting applied and the signal level going into this is 452 millivolt so it's a small signal like you would expect to see with a moving coil uh, cartridge setup the SNRs are supposed to be 85 dB and we're, we're nowhere near that. Our THD looks pretty good at 0.01%. However, the THD plus noise is spec at 0.05% or better with the moving coil setup going on the maximum gain of 63 dB or I think it has a 60 dB gain setting as well, but we are uh, not quite meeting that, although to be totally honest, for a phono stage point, uh, 3% THD plus noise is probably good enough. So this is kind of how it is looking, and it does have the RIAA weighting applied to try to improve this signal-to-noise ratio a bit more. Here is the Phonobox S2's frequency response from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz with a 452 millivolt signal applied. It is in the high gain state or 63 dB, actually 62 and a quarter dB. And once again, the input resistance is 1k ohms and the input capacitance setting is 100 picofarads. So this is what we're getting. Its specification is plus or minus a half a dB and we're there we do have a little bit of noise but you have to remember we have a very small signal applied with all that gain and you're going to start seeing little uh, noise issues pop up but that's not stuff that you would hear at all so overall the frequency response is meeting its requirement here is the Phonobox S2's THD versus frequency for several different input signal levels and that's with the gain dip switch is set for 40 dB now the minus 40 dBV would be the equivalent of 10 millivolts and minus 52 dBV would be the equivalent of 2.5 millivolts. And once again, we're going from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The specification is that the THD should be better than 0.01% with a moving magnet cartridge, which would be the 40 dB setting most likely. So you can see that at the high end of the band, we would be failing that requirement. Our THD is maybe, we'll say, 0.3%. But for the most of the frequency band, I would say from 10 kilohertz on, it, it's probably better than about 0.03%. So overall, it looks pretty good.
This plot shows the THD versus frequency for several different input signal levels with the 63 dB gain setting, and it's from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. It's kind of hard to read, but at the higher input uh, signal levels, the distortion definitely gets up to a very high over 10 percent, uh, much more than that. And so what I'm going to do is remove these higher power level settings till we get a clear indication as to what is kind of the safe level of an input signal to use when using the 63 dB gain setting. I removed all of the input power levels that were giving us a lot of distortion here at the low part of the frequency band. And so now it looks pretty good starting with a minus 62 dBV input, which is about 0.1 uh, millivolt, I believe, to minus 70 dBV input. And you can see the worst case distortion at the low part of the frequency band is probably about 0.3% THD. So it kind of just gives you an idea with this particular uh, gain setting that if you start getting above oh, minus 62 dBV in, you could start getting a lot of distortion at the low part of the frequency band. Now, I didn't mention, but this guy does have a low cut filter in it. It's switchable. It's supposed to be a uh, switchable subsonic filter minus 12 dB at 20 hertz. So that probably would have help with some of that noise. I'm, I'm sure that it would have. In fact, maybe I'll uh, rerun the test, and if it makes a big difference, I will show that. Right now, we're looking at the frequency response from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz with a 5 millivolt signal applied. I do have the RIAA weighting applied, and you can see it's looking pretty good. It's within um, the specifications. It should be plus or minus half a dB, and it's looking pretty good like it did before. But what I wanted to show was what happens when I switch in the subsonic switch, which is supposed to provide minus 12 dB at 20 hertz of effect, and we'll see if that happens. And <laughs> at 20 hertz, we have maybe, oh, I would say three tenths of a dB uh, gain boost. So it definitely is not acting like a subsonic switch at all. Maybe there's something wrong with this unit. I do have it set for 40 dB of gain and a 1k ohm and 100 puff input impedance. One thing I need to mention right away is that while I was measuring the device, I'm also recording as I'm measuring, and I was basing the specifications on the product data sheet, and it turns out that specifies the THD as THD plus noise. And it was failing that spec. When I actually got the manual downloaded and looked at the specifications, it specified the THD as THD, just a normal percent. And with that in mind, it met the THD requirements. So overall, it, it was not as good as the SNRs uh, on the spec sheet, but it still had fairly decent SNRs, at least for the uh, the 40 dB gain state. The SNRs went down, of course, when you went to the 63 dB gain state. But for the most part, I think that the preamplifier did a pretty good job of meeting its requirements. The flatness looked really good. And, you know, overall, I think I would go ahead and recommend this with the one caveat that if you're using it as a moving uh, coil, cartridge phono preamplifier, you want to make sure that your output out of the moving coil cartridge is going to fall within the range that I showed on the graph that this kind of worked. Because if it's a bit too high, it's going to start distorting at the low part of the frequency band as you saw in the test data. So that's kind of my only caveat with it. But overall, I think it works really well. Now the uh, low cut, that 20 dB low cut, didn't do anything. It added, what, a couple tenths of a dB, I think the data showed. So there may be something wrong with this particular unit, but the phono cut didn't work on this one the way it's supposed to. But that's not anything that I would really care about using. So it's kind of like a don't care for me. So that's kind of my take on it. There might be less expensive preamps, but I think it works okay as long as you use it within the output cartridge levels. It's a lot more forgiving with moving magnet cartridges. And I've never owned a moving coil cartridge. I, I never see that happening. 
but for moving magnet stuff, you know, I would have no hesitation to recommend this guy, and you know, at least based on its measurements. And I didn't listen to it. Um, as I said earlier, a lot of the receivers that I get that have poor phono cartridge uh, measurements, when I listen to them, they sound okay. I mean, we're talking about phono anyway, so it's kind of is what it is. So that's kind of my take on it. Once again, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so, so it can help the channel grow. And if you like the video, of course, give it a thumbs up, and I'm always curious to see your comments or questions. So until next time, have a great day or night.